Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Stock. Today I would like to talk to you about recent stock market news. There's a few stocks that I would like to take a look at. One of them really intrigues me with the way that the real estate market is going with the inflated prices that we have on housing and also the demand on the materials. I think that we have a really interesting opportunity ahead of us for that. Also, I would like to talk about Workhorse again. I talked about them yesterday, but I think that there's also a lot more reason to pay attention to them today and really how it's going to steer the direction of that company going forward. And finally, DraftKings, a little bit of an update on that concerning a new analyst price target coming out of Goldman Sachs. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's get ready to rock. Welcome back. Before we get started, I would like to tell you about my Patreon. It's a group that we have, and there's also a private Discord attached to it. And we talk about stocks, we talk about the things that we're watching in the market. There's some people over there with some really good insights. They've certainly called a lot of stocks that I didn't even see coming. It's really neat to watch them as investors and listen to their perspectives. It works out really well to share that knowledge as a community and help each other grow into the financial freedom that we seek. The link for that Patreon is down in the description. Why don't you come on over and join us? We'd love to have you. Also down in the description, you'll find a link for Webull. By signing up and depositing $100, you get four free stocks. For the referral, I get two free stocks. It does help support this channel. In the next few days, I'll have my new equipment here, new camera, new microphone, and so I'll also have a new setup ready to go. Uh, better quality, better sound, and a, a less boring background. So thank you for those of you who have supported me so far, and thank you to those of you who have yet to support me. Again, that link for Webull is down in the description. Finally, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Let's get on to the stocks. So the first stock that I have for you today is SG Blocks. And what they do is they take recycled shipping containers, like big steel shipping containers that you find on cargo ships, and they recycle them and they turn them into buildings. So these buildings can be residential, they can be commercial, they can be mobile where they just bring in, uh, for instance, something for COVID-19 if they need to set up a, some sort of a custom fabricated testing station or treatment station, uh, they can do that, they can have them ready to go they're a growing company. I really think that if they can move into an area of increased efficiency and profitability, that we're really going to see some positive things coming out of them. Really, the biggest thing that int intrigues me about SG Blocks, and by the way, the ticker symbol is SGBX, is the housing market that we're in right now. There was a big demand in 2020 with the lower interest rates, so houses were being bought up, which that increased demand. That increased demand for housing has cut us short on supply for housing. And as far as new housing goes, and as far as looking for houses, the housing market is supposed to be very good in 2021, very competitive. And if they can get into that residential market and really put their products out there, they're, they're cheap, they're efficient, they're eco-friendly, they go along really well with the green movement that we have. As a matter of fact, they have what they call green steel, which is trademarked, and it's those shipping containers that they have. And I mean, you just have to, you have to go to their website to see it. So when I show their stock chart, I'll also show, I'll take you over to their website quickly, and I'll show you some of the things that they do, because I can't believe that some of the structures that they build were one shipping containers. So let's jump over to the charts, and we'll take a look. So what we're looking at here is the SG Blocks website, and uh, in the background, you can see a Starbucks building that was manufactured using the recycled shipping containers that they had. And you can see as, as you read through, they make it very plain on what they do and they show you the shipping container. And as you scroll down through, they can they show you what they've turned it into. So you see these commercial buildings that they have. Uh, this one right here is looking a lot more residential, maybe more like even on an office building. I don't know. I like really. Um, new age kind of stuff. Maybe over here would be a better example of residential that you would have. Uh, also down here, I mean, they just have uh, so many incredible things and you can see that they're using them in commercial spaces, residential spaces, uh, office spaces. Uh, one thing that they even suggested on here, I don't know if it's on this page or not, uh, is that they use 
the mobile showroom for Mini Cooper is really cool. Um, but also talking about using these as possible charging station uh, areas or charging station garages that you would have that would really feed in really well to the EV market. Honestly, if they capitalize on that, especially with everything that's going on uh, with Biden's plan to really push the EVs, I'll get more into that when I talk to Workhorse, um, they could even stand to capitalize that way from using these shipping containers in this way. So these shipping containers, this is from their investor presentation, talking about just how strong they're made to endure really harsh conditions and uh, the efficiency and also um, the, the cost savings that would be done through using these containers rather than using other uh, building materials that they would have. And also if the, it's made on um, American soil, that could also go along with uh, Biden's plans to, to have things that are uh, made in the USA. And then uh, green, we are in a huge green movement right now. So being able to recycle things in this way and use them and reducing carbon footprint, I think that they have some really strong legs to stand on between the housing market, the EV market, if they're building uh, garages for shipping containers from them. I think that, uh, you know, when they say that it's an innovative business model, you know, I really think that they're on to something um, really good here. And it, it, I would love to see it go. And I'd love to see them be a hugely successful company. So what we're looking at here is the weekly chart for SGBX. And you can see that it's not always been such a great story for them, but I really think that the timing is getting right in the market for them. And if you look towards the end, let me switch down to the daily. You can see that other people are starting to see, to see the value in this company as well, that not too long ago, just back in September, being down, you know, around $1.67 and just skyrocketing off from there, you know, going up, what, five times or so, four to five times uh, up to this point that we have here. I really think that we're heading soon towards the next breakout as we have these ramp ups and now we're just kind of stalling a little bit here. I think the housing market push is going to be huge for this. And I also think clean energy, green energy, I think that really the implications that they could have there uh, being a company that, that is founded on being able to recycle and build, build uh, superior products. I think that they really have a lot going for them. If we look at the analysts for this, the, the price target that's currently set on this is at $9 and we're not far away from that. But I really think that they have a lot of strength that's just, it's missing right now because I, even though we see this run up going on, I really think that there's even more behind it, especially if they can get really deep penetration into that housing market and also deep penetration into the EV charging stations. Um, those would be things that I think would really propel this business forward, especially if they can find ways to capitalize it by keeping their costs down and really pushing those profit margins. Looking more intraday on the hourly, you can see that we've kind of worked somewhat sideways for the past while. We got some pretty good resistance down here around the $7.50 mark. So losing that 50 cents that we would have, that would be, I don't know, about a 6% drop from its current price right here in the after hours of $8.02. Um, you guys can check the math on that one. If I'm wrong, just let me know down in the comments. But uh, looking at this, the upside on this, it, we're trading pretty much in a range that it looks like about, about 50 cents either way, 50 cents up, 50 cents down. And it's nice to see that range. It gives us time to, to think on this and to really um, be patient waiting for that next pop to come in. I got to move on. That's my case for SGBX. Read into it. Let me know what you think of the company. I think that they have some serious potential not only in residential and commercial areas with the, with the green movement, but also with EVs, with the charging stations, if they can be the structural part of, uh, of those charging stations, you know, they might have a lot of demand for their product. And I, me being somebody who would also like to uh, soon um, build a new home, if they could offer their product, that would uh, make the building of that home significantly cheaper and also structurally more sound than, than traditional building materials then I'm all for it. All right, so the next thing, this really, I talked about Workhorse yesterday, and then this came out today. I promise I didn't have any knowledge of it, but it is really nice to see uh, that sort of boost, that sort of excitement go into uh, Workhorse and that possible USPS contract that was talked about and delayed. Maybe this is a catalyst that finally gets it going that with those over half a million fleet vehicles uh, being put, uh, you know, that demand going into the EVs that we would have. 
it, I, you know, that would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, so if I know I currently hold a position in Workhorse and I did check that price, uh, I'm in about $17 a share. I thought I, would, I paid a little bit more than that, but I'm happy to find out I actually paid less. So I'm in a, a much better position, getting close to double my initial investment. And so as an investor, I'm, I'm very happy about that. And I'm glad that I decided to make it a long-term hold. And I really hope that they do benefit um, not just for me, but just for clean energy's sake and for anybody else who might be an investor in this. Uh, remember, we're all here for the same thing. We're all here to make money to be financially free. So that here's the daily chart for Workhorse. And you can see the news <laughs> came out today and uh, this stock just ripped upward. And, and it just smashed resistance that we had based on that possible let me move my picture out of the way here. We broke over that uh, peak that we had at about $31 a share, popping up all the way to over $33 a share. So that momentum, I don't think that it'll go away in a single day. We might see some profit taking going into tomorrow, but I really think that that's going to help us. I think today started off a really important bullish run with Biden, if his plan goes through to replace the government vehicles with 650,000 EVs. That's going to put some serious demand on the market and workhorse standing to benefit from that. Uh, as if, they, if they get those orders rolling in, I think that we're going to see a lot of strength coming out of their stock price going forward. So this is one to keep an eye on. Let's just take a really quick look intraday. And looking at this thing intraday, look at the volume that we had uh, all through January, not a whole lot going on. You can see dropping, 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 things got really boring, all the way down to about $21 a share, and then gaining, well, over 50% of its value by the end of the after hours uh, today. I mean, those two uh, jumps that we had were just incredible. So we can see a little bit of the volume pick up here and then really ramp up once that news came out uh, from Biden, the statement of uh, purchasing those 650,000 vehicles. Last stock that I said that I would talk about, I said I'd talk about DraftKings and uh, today was a, a decent day for it that we made it up over the, the previous day. However, this top, it did fail to break the previous high that we had. It'll be neat to watch this as the days progress. It is important that before it drops back down that we break that previous high. We wanna keep on that bullish run that we have going. And right now, if we put up the EMA 200, we still are bullish on this. So if you're going to, uh, if you're going to trade for this, trading with the trend would mean that you would trade hoping that the stock would go up in price. So keep an eye on that part of it. You might still find a decent buying opportunity if you think that this is going to go up. Goldman Sachs did come out today and put a price target on this of $65. And I believe that they remarked that this is the early innings for DraftKings. Just a quick look intraday, you can see that people got really excited about the news, about the new price target. And it looks like they tried to start taking it up there all in a, all in a single day. Uh, and then we had some profit taking and then, you know, the news settled a little bit, you know, and people kind of cooled down on the hype. I think tomorrow will be still a pretty good day for DraftKings. I don't think that we'll be dropping back down to lows. I think that we'll maybe take a small upward climb and I would really love to see it within the next few days or even next few weeks before it comes back down. I would like to see it put in a new high just as further confirmation that that bullish trend is going to continue. I can easily see this stock hitting that $65 price target that Goldman Sachs has put on it. So here we're looking at the analyst comments that we have, and they also state that they see uh, drafting and Penn National as having the greatest optionality to drive the network effect. So they're naming those two as the leaders in the gambling stocks. So when you, when you read this, when you look at this, if you're going to talk about DraftKings, you also want to include Penn National. So since Penn was mentioned, just a quick look at their daily chart. They did not follow what DraftKings did. They put in a, a fairly good low today, and it would be interesting to look at the news for Penn National Gaming. But overall, the sentiment on this is, is still bullish. We're still putting in higher highs and we're still putting in higher lows. So Goldman Sachs identifies Penn National as also a leader in their eyes, just as Gra DraftKings is seen as a leader in their eyes. So if you're going to look at one, you can look at the other. You can decide to invest in both. You can decide to invest in either one of them. And I'm sure that you can find a gambling stocks ETF out there that would help give you exposure to a multitude of companies as well. So SGBX, be on the lookout for them. Read about them, research about them, see what you think about them. See if you think that they really stand a chance in residential and in commercial with real estate. See if they'll move right along with the housing market. If they have a chance at the EVs with the charging station garages, 
those are some of the things that really intrigued me about that company and really convinced me if I were to take a position that now would be the time to take the position despite the fact that their prices already run up and they're nearing that endless target of nine dollars I still think that they have a huge opportunity this year and in uh, also going into 2022 as well assuming that those demands just keep on running going on to workhorse Workhorse is the only stock that stands to benefit from the 650000 It's not like it's going to be a sole contract. Other EV car companies also moved up right along with the news. Lordstown Motors was definitely one of the ones that was in there that moved. Also, you had the other clean energy stocks moving right along with it. Uh, Blink Charging, I think, had a, a pretty big day. And other companies that are associated with the clean energy and the EV space uh, that news really moved it, but also news that will come out that's damaging to Biden's statement of wanting to replace all 650,000 government fleet vehicles with EVs. If news comes out that's damaging to that, then we can expect to see some red uh, in those areas, which might also cause some buying opportunities, depending on if that news is temporary, if it's just somebody blowing smoke. So be on the lookout for those things because those could cause slight pullbacks. If it goes away entirely, those would be big pullbacks. I don't expect that to happen. I really think that we're in the movement that this is bigger than just the things that Biden says. This is something that the people want, not just here in the United States, but globally. People want better, more environmentally conscious companies and also would like to be part of the environmental movement. DraftKings, as that legalization comes out, I believe it's New York, Florida, Texas, those are all different states that are considering the legalization of online gambling, along with the other, I think it's 22 states that have already legalized it. I think we're at close to 50% of the United States population that can legally gamble online within their state. So getting more of those states on board means more people able to gamble, which means more revenue and should lead to more profits coming through those companies, even if they're not yet profitable. So DraftKings, be on the lookout for them. Penn National, they're also one of those leaders. I know I didn't originally intend to talk about them, but I really feel like talking about DraftKings, I should also include Penn National because Goldman Sachs felt like they should include both of them. So if you have a position, I have a position with DraftKings and Workhorse. I do not have a position with Penn National or SGBX, although they are certainly in consideration for me taking a position. I would just like to have the right buying opportunity. For SGBX, that opportunity could be very soon. For Penn National, having that big red day like they did, I'm going to do a little bit more reading, find out about it, and I think that that will also be something that I will be taking a position on within the near future. So that's what I have for you. If you would like to talk stocks more with me or with my Patreon group, come over and join us. The link's down in the description. We have that Discord that's over there. We're a growing community. In my Patreon, I'm adding new features to it weekly. So I have a few more ideas of what's coming up. One of the things that's over there right now is my growth portfolio. Another portfolio that I have coming out in February is my dividend portfolio. So if you want to see the stocks that I'm invested in, besides the ones that I talk about here, come on over. If you need that trading platform, get Webull, deposit your $100. The link's down in the description. It gives you four free stocks just for signing up and doing that deposit. I get to it, helps the channel, and I really appreciate it. So thank you in advance for signing up. Again, that link is down in the description. Finally, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Always do your own research and your due diligence. Contact a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. I'm Dr. Stock. Thanks for rocking with me. Now go get that money.